Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching. The channel's called Ratchet. My name's Andrew, and on this episode, we start to tackle the mess in the front end. Run the title. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, if you're not, then thanks for tuning in for another episode. If you are new to the channel, you can click up into the top right hand corner and that will take you through to a playlist of all of the previous videos that I have released. If you like what you're about to see, and I'm sure you're going to, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Leave the video a thumbs up, leave us a comment. It's always good to read what you've got to uh, say about the project. Coming up on this episode, I'm going to start tackling the mess that is the front end of the car. I'm gonna get all of the old um, servos, vacuum, pedal assembly, etc., stripped out in prep for the new pedal box and a whole load of new paneling. So I'm hoping it's going to be another um, really productive video. So let's get on with it. So this is what I'm gonna be dealing with in this episode, starting to make headway into cleaning up all of this mess. Ignore this strap or ignore that brace um, that I've put underneath the top cover. It was going to be an idea for something that hasn't actually happened. So I do need to cut that out. Um, should anyone wonder what on earth it's doing there? Um, just one of those things. So anyway, I've mentioned before, but I think I'm thinking about doing away with the fire extinguisher system. Um, I need to move it from this location anyway because I need to deepen the nostrils on the front nose panel to get or to allow more air to pass through the radiator because I've closed up the sides. So whether I do away with this completely, whether I relocate this bottle somewhere, I've not quite decided or whether I just run a standard old good old fashioned fire extinguisher um, in front of the passenger seat, really not decided, but the old pedal assembly can go, vacuum, vacuum's going to go, servo, horn, I'll tuck away somewhere, washer bottle, going to do something far nicer with that, so I'm hoping that in a couple of videos time, realistically, this is going to be unrecognisable. So I've got the front end stripped out, nothing difficult, just nice and methodical working. I did make sure I bagged and tagged everything, so at least I know what won't be going back into the car, if that makes sense, and that's pretty much all of it. So this is my lovely new pedal box, built by Southern GT, and it's, it's going to do the job absolutely perfectly, I think. I didn't really want to spend the money going for an OBP um, pedal box, regardless of how gorgeous they look, a uh, thousand pounds, it's a bit of a tough pill to swallow. So this one came in way less than half that, complete with the Wheelwood uh, cylinders. Fitting wise, I think very roughly, it's not going to be a million miles off the old Tornado one. The Tornado pedal box does have a separate accelerator pedal um, with a bracket welded to the um, chassis. So I'm going to have to cut that off so I can then fit this in its entirety and then come up with a new throttle linkage and all of that good stuff. Um, but no, it, it, looks, it looks great. I'll get some grip tape on the actual pedals just to finish that off. But generally speaking, I couldn't really ask for more for the money. So what I'm going to do now is start making up some templates for the panelling on the sides, the new panelling on the front and everywhere else. So I will check back in with you when I've got something pretty to show you. One week later. So I've been squeezing in every hour possible uh, this week trying to get the front end done and dusted. I've made some really good progress, which I'm about to run you through. What you can see behind me is the fact that it is pretty much stripped down at the moment. And what I've got in place is the standard flat panels that came fitted with the car. So what I thought would be quite uh, an interesting thing to show you is the steps that I go through taking the original panels as the base template, um, adding masking tape, 
extra dimensions wherever is necessary to get them fitted slightly more um, accurately. And then the steps that I went through with the new panels and the additional thought and, and everything that was involved in how I'm going to end up with the final product, which you'll see at the end of this segment. So let me crack on giving you the full tour round and so you can see what's involved in, in achieving what I have done, basically. So working from the top down, the first panel that I'll run you through is the one where the pedal assembly was sat. You can obviously see the cutout for that. There was various other cutouts or holes, sorry, for um, brake pipes to pass through. The larger circular holes where the wiring loom came through and then the other miscellaneous holes were to do with the brake servos and other um, bits and pieces that ran through that portion of the bulkhead. So all that was needed on this particular panel was just to tighten up underneath the chassis. So I just marked that in with some uh, masking tape. So that was super simple. And then I wanted to add a return along the bottom edge of 40 mil. And I'll explain more in a second why I wanted to do that. So then moving to the next panel down, there was a, a few little cutouts that weren't necessary. So I just masked those over. So I knew to rule a straight edge. And then another 40 mil lip, which was going to be dressed down over the final third panel, which was this piece. And again, just setting myself some new edges to work to on the sides. This front access panel, which is removable, and it allows you to get to the um, steering rack mountings and, and bushes. So it is necessary to be removable, but it was fairly crudely cut. Um, so yeah, it's due for the bin. Um, and again, just tightening up on a few edges on the right hand side. So if I take away this middle panel, you can see that there's nothing for it to rivet to along this back edge. So it just sort of floats around in, uh, in mid-air somewhat. So what I thought I would do was if I added a return along that edge, it would then allow me to drill and rivet through the new panel, through the new back panel with the return lip, and it would give me a much more robust detail along that back edge, both for uh, strength of paneling and also for water tightness. So what I'll do now is I'll get all of this existing stuff out of the way and then I'll get the first panel in place um, and start running you through sort of the, uh, the steps and, and the kind of build up of this whole front end. So step one is quite uh, a transformation in relation to the old panel. So now it's made up of three panels. We see the main back one, the access panel, and then a small stepped cover panel, which runs underneath the coolant pipes. So the access panel I've made probably 40 mil lower. Um, and I think the proportions just work better and it still gives me heaps of room to access the bolts to the steering rack. And then, as I've mentioned, underneath the coolant pipes, there is a third panel, which cloaks the cutouts that I had to make to be able to lift the removable panel off. So it, it cloaks the chassis, and it also gives me a really nice fit and finish around the coolant pipes. Around the actual holes, I will add possibly a, a small little rubber U-channel just to remove any possibility of any chafing of any description. And it'll also just close up that gap around the coolant pipes just slightly and make it look even more um, professionally done, I guess. Make it look uh, even nicer. Into. So step two is the main back panel. I've managed to reuse the existing rivet holes, which was nice. That saved me quite a lot of um, welding and re-drilling. The cutout for the pedal box was obviously increased in size to suit the new 
Southern GT pedal box. And there you can see the return lip that's going to pick up the panel that sits um, in the middle there. In three, in four. So now steps three and four is the installation of the middle panel. And you can see the um, lip that dresses over the bottom panel. So that cloaks the top edge of that. And the installation of the chassis for the um, Southern GT pedal box. Let me just show you how that sits down in the footwell. So I've positioned it so the column runs nicely um, in between the brake and the accelerator pedal. And I think it should work out quite nicely. In five. So just for assembly at this stage, I've taken out the radiator. And that is because I need to drill some more holes along the uh, front edge of the chassis to mount the panel to. And I also need to then drill the larger holes to actually fix the radiator to. And I can't do that before the clam's out of the way. So that's going to have to come a little bit later. So to get it all mocked up now, just taking the radiator out just so I can get everything in place. So this is the lower panel um, for the inside of the chassis. And you'll notice that there's this uh, sausage shape that I've cut out. And that is because of how tight the coolant pipes are to the inside of the chassis. Now, they do fit really nicely to the inlet and outlet um, points of the radiator. So I didn't want to go and try bending these to give me some clearance for the panels because, or they create a good seal at the moment and they do line through perfectly. So I didn't want to upset the apple cart and try tweaking these just to benefit some decorative panels. So that is the reason why these are cut out. As I'm sure you can imagine, um, I'm really happy with how these have turned out. I've managed to get some real nice um, angles and lines and creases in, in all of these panels. And that's mainly down to the complex angles and shapes at the front of the Tornado chassis um, that's basically constructed with. So, you know, you can imagine that if everything was in the same plane and on the same angle, it would just lead to some dead flat, really quite boring looking panels. But because there's, um, you know, interacting, dissecting angles, you have to put creases in the panels for them to um, face up nicely with the chassis. So that in turn sort of lends itself to giving the whole piece some interest. So yeah, I'm, I'm really chuffed with how they've turned out. The sausage lozenge shapes around the pipes are as tight as I can get them or as tight as I'm comfortable to get them. And again, they'll, the edges will be, um, uh, lined with some rubber U-channel or something of that description to, um, again, just give them a bit more of a finished look. And Bully's special prize! What I have done is put on the inner arch panels because these have also seen some work alongside the uh, front end panels. So now I've got the top edge um, of the main panels drilled. and also got them dressed to interact nicely with the new inner panels. One little bit of detail that I do like is the fact that all of the holes, both on the inner panel, the top side of the outer panel, and then the outside face of that panel, they all line through. So it's just uh, another little thing that sits happily on my brain. Top panels in just so you can sort of start to get a view of what it all looks like.
that's about enough for one episode. Huge amount of work done to the front end and I'm really happy with how it's turned out as I seem to be with everything. Um, still a huge amount of work to do to get everything to a stage where it is ready for um, the covering to be removed and everything to start to be brushed and all of that good stuff. But we'll get to that in all good time. Um, thanks for watching. If you like what you have seen, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Leave a thumbs up, leave us a comment. It's always really appreciated to uh, read what you think about the progress that I'm making. Coming up on the next episode, um, I'm not sure yet. I think there's going to be a couple of little bits that I want to remake, actually. Um, I'm not overly happy with the rear panel in the engine bay bulkhead. I've been giving that a lot more thought, so I'll go into that into more detail. Um, also, there's a few other little tweaks and bits and pieces that I want to do. I need to start looking at the fuel system, start getting that compacted right down so I can tuck that away behind the driver's side fuel tank. There's, there's just a million and one things that I need to start addressing. So I'm not going to be short of jobs, but whatever I do do, I'll make sure I catch it on video so I can share it with you all. So up until then, I will catch you next time.